One thing I love to do without fail is paint papers. I think the reason I like it so much is because it transports me to a child frame of mind, very childlike. Often I'm just experimenting, I'm trying techniques I might have read about. I'm really, you know, just messing around, maybe going into mad scientist mode, who knows what. So then, you know, I end up with a big pile like this. This is a couple different weeks accumulation on all different types of paper. This is on a heavier, more of a cardstock type paper, which I don't do too much. And I don't know what the heck I was doing that day. I can't remember. But anyway, so I end up with this massive pile. And this is when I like to pause for a moment and maybe go back in and do some more work on individual pages. Some of these are very cool and I know that I will use them as is. Like, look at this little part right there, that little component part. Now, you know that's a gel play, clean up print probably. But some of the others, they're cool, but they're just not where I want them to be or I don't think that I would use them in their current situation. So it's fun to go back and do something else to them. You can glue things to them and make these very more intricate collage components. That's one thing to think of. You can dribble ink on them. You can scribble on them. You can emboss patterns on them. So many different things. What I thought I might do today is just play with some of them very randomly. So this is going to be random paper play, or you can call it whatever you like. When I do this, what I typically use is supplies I'm trying to get rid of. Maybe um, like a thing of ink that's almost at the bottom and it's just still hanging out in my studio and it's just this crazy, I need to just get rid of it already. Or paint where, like look at this tube of paint, right? I've had that thing forever. Now I do love this particular color. It's gonna be sad when it goes, but you know, so that sort of thing. Um, some of these, I have these ones from Pam Carriker that I love. These are acrylic inks and I love them, but I don't use royal purple so much, but I bet some specks of it in and among some of these papers might really rock. So just, that gives you an idea. I've got a pencil over here. I've got some sponges for stenciling. I've got white gesso, a spray bottle. Just grab whatever it is you think you might want to work with and play along. It can be really just fantastic fun. So I'm going to move these out of the way. I have this here because I wanted to show you what I will often do with little bits and parts. These are leftovers after I've collaged. So then I have these parts. So I thought if I do decide to build up some collage, I might reach for little bits in here. All right, well, let's just start playing, right? This is, I can tell, it's some cheap paper I got at the dollar store. It has like um, very little useful quality to it. Oh, this might be too far gone. Look at it. Oh, it's so sad. Oh, that makes me really sad. I don't know if I can dig that out. I suspect not. All right, that's a very sad tale right there. Let's grab this. Oh, look at this Holbein acrylic. This is a luminous yellow, which is a really cool color. And, um, oh, there it is. So, you know, I can already tell what I'm gonna need next that I don't have out here. Um, which is a skewer, so I'm gonna grab a skewer. Yeah, because here's what I often like to do during on these things, is draw something. I love to see that underneath color popping through like that. Sometimes I will draw it with pencil. You can certainly do this as well. And I think you can already see how you're gonna get collage components that might be more interesting. Edge treatments. I really like to go back and get some edge treatments when I do this. Because when I'm ready to collage it in, 
If I don't have an interesting edge, I'm probably gonna just tear that away. So why not make some interesting edge treatments and see what happens? I got a little putsy something on there. Probably gonna set that aside. Let's grab a color here. This is called White Washed. It's in a, one of Pam Carriker's acrylic paints. I don't even know if Jerry's Artorama is still selling these, but I used to really like them back in the day. And I like this one because it was just exactly what it says. It's white washed. It's almost like a zinc white. So if you don't have this and you want more of like a sheer white glaze, just grab some zinc white and make it the consistency you want. That's a golden makes a gorgeous zinc white. So you could get that. All right. So I think this one looks pretty good. Um, I'm gonna see if I can get my transparent shading gray. I'm gonna shake it up. This is my great favorite, favorite color for adding just a little bit of, oh, this is a brand new one. Let me get an old one that's about to be worn out here. Yep, yep, here's one. And then we'll just throw some dots on here, assuming it'll come out. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Sometimes I let some of it get super mushy in the middle like this. And I think that's done, so I'm gonna set it aside to dry. All right, now, the only thing you have to be mindful for as you're doing this is to wipe up between each page. And the only reason I say that is because so many of the papers I use are really such an inferior quality that they won't stand up to water on the back, the front, and every which way. Like that piece I was just using, that was a really, um, really delicate piece of paper. All right, this guy has got some great little parts and I can see that I used a little metallic underneath there, which I do rather like. So I might leave him go for the moment. Let's try this one and maybe we'll use a stencil. This is an Ann Butler design. This might be nice to use on top here. Get some pops of, this is a thinner. Let's see here. Delft Blue. So see what I'm saying about kind of my oddball paints? I mean, you guys know I'm a golden girl, right? So I use golden almost all the time, but it's fun to sometimes reach out and grab some different paints that you might not be inclined to use. Now, when I do this, I'm not gonna just stencil it over so it's this perfectly patterned thing. I'm gonna just hodgepodge go on it. So there, that's a good, good one, set aside. Gonna grab a baby wipe so that I can wipe this off. Now, this still has enough on here to be put on something else. So let's try putting it here. You can clean your stencil. Wow, who knew, right? Stencils can be cleaned. I'm typically such a pig with mine. Now that is super faint but I still think you might get to see a little bit of it on the edge. And it dried a lot faster than I was thinking. It's um, pretty dry in here today. All right, so since I've got some extra, I'm just gonna put some blobby paint up here at the edge of this paper. Once again, this is a very inexpensive paper and I'm gonna just make some lines through it as fast as I can. Boy, is this a fast dry and acrylic. I could also grab my pencil, do some scribbles through here. Just a few little edge parts. And then when you tear this down, you're gonna get, you know, you have an interesting piece of collage there that you might like a lot. I could also put some, um, inks or some dots. I could 
grab like the Stina Wakely paint with the point, you know, you can express out. You could put some little points on there. You could do the little finger, <laughs> the little, look, give it the finger. Not that way, you know what I mean. So any which way that you can think of to decorate these little paint parts can just be a lot of fun. And the thing that's so cool, now this one has, doesn't really have much going on. So let's just do this. Oh, look at that splat. Nice. Let's wet that a little bit. Oh, see? I mean, look at that right there. That's just a little bit of magic, right? Set aside to dry. All right, here's another one. Doesn't have as much going on. I mean, it's fine. Not every piece has to be, you know, a masterpiece for sure, because lots of times you're just looking for a background collage element and maybe that's all that you need. But let's see. Let's look at this. What is this? Oh, that's a phthalo blue. I thought it was bronze. Never mind. How about this? Let's see. I'm trying to see. I know what I want and I'm not finding it yet. So looking, looking, looking. Raw umper. This might work. This would work, I do believe. So let's put a little out here. Now I've still got a yucked up palette knife, but that's okay. It'll blend in in certain places. This page is a little bit crinkly, so I'm even getting some textural effects, which is nice. I like that. I like how that's coming out. It looks very interesting to me. I'm gonna um, go for another one of Pam's colors and see if I can get a splatter on top of that. I'm gonna go for Rusted. I haven't used these for so long and that's what kind of made me think I wanted to use them. So it's like a tone on tone, but it's very pretty. Nice. Let's try, I don't know about Poppy. I wonder if it's gonna pop that underneath red. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, it sure is. Look at that red rolling around on there. It's kind of pretty, huh? So I already think this is vastly improved. Set aside to dry. So having control on this is probably the hardest thing <laughs> because you can get going in such a way that you, um, you know, you're too over-focused on it and you spend too much time, which, you know, that's no good. Let's try wetting this first and put it down. Let's see if we can clean up our table. I don't know if that raw umber is a good match or not. That's a look looking a little, that's, hmm, I don't know. It's very grungy, that's for sure. Hmm, let's see what we can do if we sit it down and maybe I'll drop some inks on it and see what happens here. Let's try rusted, just dribbled on the top. Again, don't be deterred if you don't have exactly the products I'm using. It just simply doesn't matter. You're just trying to get it down and do something interesting. Already, I'm liking that much better, of course. I think that would be a lovely little collage component. Now, here's a good example of how, even though I'm just making some collage parts, I've got value changes within the, the component here, the collage component. And if you squint your eyes, you'll know what I'm talking about. You've got lights and darks right there within the piece, which is ultimately going to add more interest in the end when you put this into a piece of art or a journal page or whatever it is you might be doing with it. It's going to make a difference. Let's put some more. Ooh, that went crazy. That just spurted right at me. <laughs> Luckily, I'm wearing studio clothes. So let me go for something a little bit more absorbent. 
let's, I'm gonna take this part away because I do like this part over here. So I think that part is just done, but let's try this. And there you go. Nice, done. Let's see what else we have over here. I'm gonna tear this off camera because it's getting a little wet in the middle of my working area. All right, so here's the piece I tore apart. Now, what I like very much about this piece is the fact that there must have been another page laying on top of it when I was working it, and I like that a lot. So I'm going to just draw right along that really haphazardly. And then I'm going to add some more of this. That color rusted is a magic color. If you're um, looking for colors in other lines of paint, you, the quinacridone gold is very similar to that or a terracotta or whatever. Now this one we didn't maintain our value changes. It's okay, not every single collage part has to be perfectly composed and meet all the criteria and design elements, but it, it's, a, once again, I think it's an interesting little part that I know I'm gonna reach for someday, maybe later today. And let's do something in the blue category. Maybe some blue and green. Let's see what we've got here. Put the raw umbra away. And this blue. Oh, this is um, one of these Pebios that I really like. PBO, Pebio, whatever you call it. It's this kind of this little iridescent. I got this as a sample one year and I liked it a lot. I thought it was a cool color. You ever tried just kind of smacking your palette knife down? You get a lot of different looks. You can easily get different looks with your palette knife, so don't dismiss them. The different use of the side, the bottom, the tops, smoothing, smacking, whatever you want to do, can get some hostility out too. <laughs> if you have, if you're feeling particularly hostile. Now, I had something on the palette knife, probably that burnt umber that's coming through there, and it looks a little grungy. You may like it, you may not like it. So it, once again, is another, oh, this one did dry up. Oh, this was one of my favorite colors, rain. Okay, bye-bye, rain. Bye-bye. Let's look at Celadon, though. And let's see if we can dribble. I kind of wanted this green to go over top of the metallic green. I just thought it might be pretty. It is really pretty, isn't it? Yeah. Ooh. Can you tell how excited I get just playing with the products? I am very easily amused. This is why this kind of quarantine or, you know, sheltering in place doesn't bother me in the least because I am quite content just spending hours on end in my studio playing around. I wouldn't mind popping a little bit of a blue in here. Let's see if I can find a dry spot to sit this down on. This is called Nightfall. It's a very pretty color. It's kind of reminiscent of some of the thalos. So again, if you don't have these paints, just grab for what you have. Use any kind of paint. And look at where I scratched in there. It's going down into those scratch marks, which I like rather a lot too. This is getting pretty wet, so I'm gonna set it aside. But before I do, I have another one of those. So I am going to just grab some of the wet off of it and see how this looks. Actually, it looks kind of poopy, but 
you never know when it dries. It may be just the ticket someday. So I'm going to set these aside. They're crazy wet, and we'll see how they look later. I find when I'm interested in making collage parts like this, it is much better to just do it in a very random way. If I try to set up a color scheme or try to work on a very specific project or something like that, it's just never going to end well. For me, anyway, my work is much better if I do this kind of playful process at one time and then do my collage making at another time. It just makes more sense for me and I get better results that way. Here's another piece. Some of these, I noticed the reason they don't look as interesting is that the paper was very porous and it absorbed everything I put on it. So that was um, why it didn't get that, I didn't get that exciting of a re result. Brayers are great for adding some interest. Can just leave a little bit peeking through of the underneath, and this has definitely gotten more interesting. I have this crazy idea that I wanna add um, purple to this. I don't know what I'm thinking, but you know what? Let's just give it a shot. Oh, that was a lot. <laughs> oh. And you know how I love my drips. So we'll get our drips going. One thing you could think about while you're working on these, if you wanted, is the color wheel. Because purple and yellow are opposite on the color wheel. So that means when they blend together, they're going to create a neutral for one thing. But it also means that when you're working with them, you're going to get a high degree of interest and contrast. Look at this down here. I love the end of that. So this paper has gone from something very mediocre to something very stellar in my mind. Really like it a lot. Nice. Here's another one kind of in that same color scheme. Let's see what we can do with it. The yellow's already dried down on my page. Look how it's going neutral there. And you might say, ugh, that's a mess. You know what? I don't say, ugh, that's a mess. I say, wow, what a cool neutral that I could never make on my own. <laughs> you know, that's what I say to that because I like it. And I'll grab the edges. And then if I want, I can go back and do something like that, very, um, very bold, and then allow it to dry. Well, after watching me, I'm sure you are probably itching to do some papers of your own. So get out some papers. You can start with anything you want, newspaper, magazine pages, kind of failed pages that you might have made earlier, whatever. And before you know it, I think you will have created some very interesting collage parts. And then you'll be ready to go make a collage. So enjoy and be sure and post your results online. Hashtag Stencil Girl Products. Thank you so much for watching.